you know, if interest was going to be sustained over eight hours, that we were going to get deeper into the mm -hmm. character's oh. psychology and the darkness that he lives in mentally and where that comes from and what it's born of. Hey everyone, welcome to Digital Charcuterie. My name is James. Thanks for stopping by. The Penguin has come and gone and I've had so much fun talking with you all about this series throughout the last eight weeks. I've really appreciated it and I love your comments down below. Let me know your final thoughts on the Penguin down below. Before we get into the video, I'm gonna talk about a contest coming up. I'm gonna ask a trivia question at the end of this video for your chance to win the Art of the Batman book pictured right here. You can win that trivia question at the end and I'll tell you when the announcer will be revealed. If you're not caught up with the first and only eight episodes of the Penguin series, hit the pause button, go watch it, and I'll see you in eight hours. You're playing a dangerous game with his family on. After last night's phenomenal conclusion to the series, an interview came up online with Colin Farrell on The Hollywood Reporter discussing Penguin the series and beyond. And part of that beyond is, of course, the Penguin 2. I'm going to put the link to that interview in the description down below, so check it out if you want. It's a good read. It's pretty short, too, so it's not too bad. But in there, he talks about the Batman 2, and he has, says he claims he hasn't read the script yet. So anyway, the script is done, so that's good news. And Colin Farrell is in the second movie. And then he revealed that he signed on to be in three of the Matt Reeves movies as the Penguin. And he says how much of an honor and a privilege it is to play this character. Because earlier in the summer, if you may recall, he kind of um, mentioned how he was kind of fed up with it and he had enough and he didn't want to see that effing mask face ever again. He said that was just a spur of the moment. That's how he talks. People who know him know that that's how he talks. He didn't actually mean it and he sees this again as a privilege, as an honor to play the Penguin after a long list of people, of actors who have portrayed this character. And of course, he is friends with Danny DeVito and he's mentioned Burgess Meredith in, in many, many interviews. So it'll be cool to see him in the Batman 2, but he also says he's only in maybe five to six scenes. Even though he hasn't read the script, he's not going to have a large part. Matt Reeves, separate from this article, had mentioned that Oz still, even though we got the series, is still the entry point into the Batman 2. He won't divulge any information as to what that means, but Oz is going to be the, how we get into the Batman 2. Obviously, after the series, we see Oz's rise to power, and now how he has a little bit of control in Congress, in the municipality, within the politicians of Gotham City. So you can use Falcone's murder, Oz's rise to power, something's going to be at play. We see, obviously, the bat signal appearing at the end of the episode. Batman is on to something that's going on. My, my suspicions are he's on to something with Oz. Whether or not Oz gets put away in Blackgate or Arkham at the beginning of the of the movie, I'm not sure he's going to play a bigger part or a part in the Batman 3. He could be kind of like the Scarecrow in the Christopher Nolan ones where he just kind of pops up in each film. But we've had such a great series now about this character, about his rise to power, that if they just cop out and throw him in prison or something off the bat, we might all be disappointed. Even though you can hate him for what he did to everyone around him, including Vic and, of course, his mom, making her suffer like that. But I'm really curious to see how the beginning of the Batman is going to play out using Oz and his rise to power, like his, his post-rise to power, to get Batman to where he needs to be. I'm suspecting Batman is going to, after the death of Carmine, is going to look into the Falcone family and that'll be a big thing. And we'll probably see aspects of this series from his point of view. And I'm not saying they're going to dwell on aspects. We're not going to get 15 minute segments of this movie that dwell on what we've already seen from a different point of view but i think we'll know little hints of or whatnot of where batman was during events of this film that would affect him and the rest of gotham that's what i'm saying there i think we're going to get something like that and i'm really curious what they're going to do lauren lefranc the showrunner also said that the oz that they have isn't the one that wears a top hat or a monocle and all that but at the end of the episode we obviously wear him we obviously see him with a top hat wearing the suit the penguin suit and all of that attire. So he's almost, he's very classic Penguin by the end of it. Is that the Penguin we're going to get in the Batman 2? Or we're going to transition from the end of the Batman into the Batman 2 with Penguin going from purple suit to Penguin suit? The most interesting part of the article for me was the discussion of a season 2. Warner Bros. has released a season trailer for the Penguin and it's still being described as a limited series, which would suggest that we're not getting any more seasons of this series. Matt Reeves, of course, is at talks with HBO for possibly other characters in the Batman world and the Batman lore that he could use in his Reeves verse. But Penguin is the one that everybody is hot on right now, right? We got this amazing epic eight-part series 
that people would, would like to see more of to some degree. I think for me, and I kind of feel the same way Colin Farrell does about this one, and I be, believe Lord and Frank said this a few weeks ago, if you can give me a story that's equal to or better than what we just got, let's do it. But if you're going to regress at all, what's the point? Why would you diminish what we got in the first season by giving us a second season just because it's in demand? What you could do is you could just pick another character and be like, it's more of an anthology series of Matt Reeves' world villains is what it could be as opposed to just the penguin but if the penguin does indeed need a second season that could be stronger than the first season again you should probably do it because all the pieces are there the one thing for me that would really kind of turn me off from this is the usage of Sofia Gigante because that I means such a big part of season one was their dynamic, right? Like, like I think everybody was hyper focused on Sophia and Oz and their relationship and their dynamic, and everybody, you know, just loved Sophia's character. She was such a great antagonist to Oz, to Penguin, that you wanted to see more and more and more. And then when you get her ending where she doesn't die, the hope is almost like, well, don't waste this character. And the thing with the season two is you couldn't do that again. I think if you did that again, that would just feel repetitive and lazy, and that's, I think, how you would lose the fans. You'd have to find a new antagonist for Oz, another obstacle for him to overcome. I think you leave Sof Sophia over there. If she's in the Batman 2, that's great. Maybe you give her her own series, too. Maybe the Penguin Season 2 is about Sophia Gigante. I don't know, but if, we're stick but if it is Oz, which would make sense, because if you're interviewing Colin Farrell about a Season 2 of the Penguin, you're talking about the Penguin itself. I think you have to show more of his rise in political power. I think, we're, I, think I said this in my review the other day. I think we're heading to Mayor Oz. Cobb. I think we're going to get there. I think we're going to see this transition. Now, how you get rid of Bella Real when she's only been elected for like a day and a half? I guess it's been like a month now at this point. I don't think, I don't know if you could or if you can, unless, of course, the third movie has a time jump, which would allow you the opportunity to have Oz go into that position. But I think he's got a little bit more working to do, a little bit more manipulating to do behind the scenes. And maybe that's what season two could be about. But I just think the Sophia stuff, as great as it was in season one, is the kind of thing that I think might not play out as well in season two you caught lightning in a bottle with that in the first season and i hate to see that get wasted again i think you'd have to find a new antagonist something else for us to do something else for us to play with again i haven't seen the batman 2 so it'd be hard to really speculate on that and i'm guessing that they wouldn't have this series next year because we've got to wait two years for the batman 2 to get it but colin farrell says he's up for it as long as it's better and one thing that he said in this article that i really appreciated and respected was he mentioned critics and he loved being part of something that was a critic success but then he also mentioned that the fans are the true critics if fans like something that means even more to him and that's when you want to dive deeper into it and i think that is something that hollywood the business side of hollywood is really really missing out on and losing sight of is yeah you you I don't think you should listen to fans necessarily. Like if a fan says, oh, make this character do this, don't listen to that. But fans are the ones paying the bills, right? They're the ones going to the theater that are paying for the streaming service. They're the ones that are coming to you with their hard-earned money to purchase your product, whether it's you know a show, a movie, a toy, a video game, a comic, a book, whatever. The fans are the ones that are putting their money. The fans are the reasons why they these people have jobs at the end of the day. And I thought him acknowledging that and recognizing that was honorable on his part. I think that's something, again, that I think is very much lost. And, I, and I'm saying don't let fans write the scripts. That's not what fans do. Half, some fans are plumbers. Some fans are electricians. Some are chefs, right? Some are painters. They're not all filmmakers. And if you're not a filmmaker, you know, you got you to gotta stay in your lane and let the, let the talent do what they do best, but at the same time, it's those people that are spending their hard-earned money, and when you start to fool around with what they like, they're not going to show up anymore. So I really appreciated him mentioning that, and how, how much this character meant to the fans, and how if the fans really want it, and the material is worth giving to those fans, he would come back and do a second season. All right, guys, trivia time. It's a very easy trivia contest. I promise all you have to do is answer it in the comments down below. And if you hit like, give me that like button and let me know the number of the like. I'll put your name in the draw twice to win the art of the Batman. So here it is. The trivia question today is what actor portrayed Robin in the 1960s Batman show starring Adam West? It was Adam West and his Robin was played by let me know in the comments down below. We're looking for someone who might be working here. The winner of this contest will be revealed on Thursday's Batman video entitled, Should 
the Batman 2 B-rated R. All right, everybody, that's all I got for today. Talking Penguin, Batman, and more. I'm loving it. I have a lot more Batman and Penguin videos coming at you. I promise I'm looking forward to it. But this interview with Colin Farrell came out while I was uploading the review and I read it and I said, you know what? I got to do a video on this. So I did. I hope you like it. Give us a thumbs up and don't forget to like and subscribe. And until next time, maybe the master of your own universe.